Okay, this one is for the gear nerds out there like me. Uh, I want to tell you a story about a watch. And in order to tell you a story about that watch, I have to tell you a story about another watch. I want to talk about the Garmin Instinct. Let's go. Okay, this is gonna be fun if you're like a gearhead and and really think about the gear you use and progressions of gear and stuff like that, like I do. Uh, so I wanna talk about the Garmin Instinct watch. And in order to talk about the Garmin Instinct watch, I have to talk about the Garmin Phoenix, which is spelled F-E-N-I-X. Uh, I think we're up to now a Phoenix 7. Uh, watch has been around for quite some time. When the Garmin Phoenix was originally released, I looked at that watch and was like, this is the watch that was made for me. Um, it's available in a bunch of versions depending on the size of the screen uh, or, the, or the size of the bezel, I guess, which affects the size of the screen. The bezel is the section around the watch. Casing, what the casing is made out of and what the band is made out of and a couple of other little things like that. But what made the Phoenix really impressive was before that, if you wanted a watch with a GPS, it would have a big section on the band that was the, where the patch antenna was. Uh, and they figured out a way to build the antenna into the bezel itself, which was super groundbreaking and really exciting. But that watch was really aimed at hikers in the beginning. At some point, I can only imagine the Garmin engineers realized, you know what? We can put every feature in this watch, so let's do that. So it's got all of the high-end running features, it's got all of the high-end hiking features, but you can use it kayaking, or stand-up paddleboarding, or sailing, or motorboating, or working out, or going for a run, or think anything you can think of, it will do. And they just kept adding features to that watch. And when the first Phoenix was released, I said to myself, I will know this is the watch for me if I can set its units of measure to something that would do nautical miles and knots. And in fact, there was. But the reason that that wasn't the watch for me was it was priced way higher than I could afford to spend on a watch. Um, I want to say back then, this was probably 2008. I, that's a guess, but let's, I'm going to look it up and we'll put it right over here. I, I think it was around 2008. Uh, the watch, I think, was around $500, which was way more than I could spend on a watch. So I watched Phoenix's come and go. I think we were up to the Phoenix 3, Phoenix 4. Um, oddly, I think it's there is no Phoenix 5. I think they skipped the Phoenix 5 for some reason. It went right to the 6. Um, all the while, I was like, ah, oh, I'd love that watch. I just can't afford that watch. It is a, a great piece of kit uh, that I just can't afford. It does everything I need it to do. So while I'm watching this watch progress and get better and better and more and more expensive. What I was wearing was an ABC watch. Um, and actually it was the Sunto Vector ABC watch. And ABC stands for altimeter, barometer, and compass. That watch finally died and I started looking around and couldn't figure out what watch to go to. The ABC watches had gotten more expensive. And at that time I sort of waited until I could figure it out. Someone actually had a Sunto core they weren't using that I used for a while and didn't really like. Then Garmin released the Garmin Instinct. And this was an interesting watch. The first thing was a lot of people didn't like the look of it. It was built to a military spec for durability. Uh, and a lot of people were like, it looks like a Casio G-Shock. If I want a Casio G-Shock, I'll buy a Casio G-Shock for a lot less money. It had a grayscale screen. It did basic hiking functions. It did do heart rate, uh, but it would measure speed and distance. It had a ridiculously short uh, battery life with the GPS on of about uh, eight hours. Uh, but here is the thing. It was essentially an ABC watch with a GPS added to it. It was also about the cost 
of an ABC watch. And so as I was trying to figure out how to replace my Sunto Vector, I realized for about the same price of an ABC watch, I can get a watch with GPS and see if I like it. It was about 250 bucks. It was really not that expensive. And then something really interesting happened. I started noticing all of the people that I knew that worked in the outdoors, we were all slowly switching to the Garmin Instinct. Uh, and to this day, like it just happened, I was teaching a class uh, back in North Carolina last weekend, and I met like three or four people that I hadn't worked with before or hadn't seen before, and they were all wearing Garmin Instincts. Everyone was wearing Garmin Instincts. And it was because it was accessible, it did really what we needed to do, but it didn't have all the fluff of let's add every running feature. Like I can use it to go for a run. I can use it to go for a swim. And it does those things really well. Um, I can use it to check speed and distance, which I did test paddling a boat just the other day. I wanted to see how fast I was cruising. And it does that really well. Um, and it does smartwatch features really well, but it's an affordable watch. So Garmin built this, I think inadvertently huge market or, or huge space in the market for people who wanted a high quality Garmin watch for a lot of different things, but couldn't afford the Phoenix. So what did Garmin do? Garmin um, updated the watch uh, within a year and a half. I think it took them a little while to realize what was going on. And then they added, they created a tactical version of this watch, which had the tactical feature so that it wouldn't upload your running data uh, back to things like Strava. Uh, and that goes back to, I forget where it was, a bunch of special forces guys who were deployed were running, like doing their daily fitness, and they would go for a run and upload their run to Strava. And the guys that they were fighting hacked into Strava. It might not have been Strava. It might have been Fitbit or something like that. Um, I don't mean to pick on Strava. Strava is a great app. But in any case, they hacked in and they could see the GPS data where these guys were all ending up. And then they mortared that spot. And so the tactical versions of, of Garmin watches don't automatically upload the GPS data to Strava or other apps like that for tactical safety. A lot of people think it means that the watch won't track you and report it back to the universe, which GPS doesn't do. It's got to be through an app or something like that. GPS is one way. Um, we receive the GPS data and it doesn't leave your watch from there unless it's going to an app like Fitbit or Strava or something like that. I digress. So it's got, they released a tactical feature. They also released a, uh, a limited edition surf version that had tide data that I really wanted. Um, but that was a, a fairly sizable price jump. Then they released a solar version, which was also a pretty sizable price jump. Then they released just recently the newest version of the Instinct, and it was like $450. So we're back to sort of the starting point of the price of a Garmin Phoenix. And this is what kills me about Garmin. They inadvertently create a slot in the market for people to use this watch. They, people love it. And part of what they love about it is that it's inexpensive, comparatively inexpensive. $250 for a watch is still a lot. But they then add a ton of features and price it out of the market for the very people who made it popular. That is Garmin's disconnect with their customers. Now, it's important to understand Garmin is a huge company. Um, they make many watches. They make many handheld devices. They make uh, avionics for aircraft. They make chart plotters and depth sounders and fish finders for boats. Um, they make radar. They do just about everything. Um, and so I think in the scheme of things, the poor outdoor educators who are using their Garmin Instinct are a blip in the Garmin world. But still, it's exceptionally frustrating that they have priced us out. So I am sporting an original Garmin Instinct that I absolutely love, but the battery life is starting to get lower. And so I'm back in the same situation. I don't have an immediate watch to go to. I would love a Phoenix, can't afford a Phoenix. They've pretty much priced me out of the instinct. So Garmin, if you're watching, and I know you're not watching, uh, bring us back the 250 or $300 even 
Garmin Instinct. Uh, it can be a bare bones version. You know, I'd love the tides, but I don't have to have the tides. Um, I don't need, like having heart rate is great. I don't need my blood oxygen saturation, which is probably not that accurate anyway. Uh, I don't need the crazy, crazy functions. I just need the little stuff. Okay, so that's your sort of geek look into uh, Garmin watches and the outdoor world and how we sort of think about Garmin watches. Uh, if you found this interesting, and if you are, I think there's probably like 10 of you out there uh, who probably found this interesting. Do me a favor, hit like and subscribe. Uh, that would help me out a lot. But uh, yeah, this is probably pretty niche even for me. Hey, have a great day. I'll see you on the water. My hands are burning. By the way, Beth is good. <laughs> We lost Beth. We think a bear ate her. It was probably solid two weeks ago. Too. So 